Hello and welcome to another Rygate Maths video. My name's Simon and in this video we're going to be working through how to find the domain and range of composite functions where the functions themselves have restricted domains. This video really requires you to have an understanding of domain and range so if you haven't stop this video and go back and watch the videos on domain and range and maybe do some practice in those first. We're going to be using this example today where we look at two functions, relatively simple functions, with restricted domains. So let's start by thinking about what we're actually going to be doing. So we're trying to find fg of x, which means we are taking the function g and putting it into the function f. So there's a couple of ways we can think about this problem. The first one is thinking about, well, the range of g. So we've got g of x for x is less than or equal to 1. So let's just do a little sketch of that here. Doesn't need to be neat. So we've got 2 minus x, which sort of looks like this. And we want x to be less than or equal to 1. So we don't care about this bit. So our range is going to be the y values when x is less than or equal to 1. Which is going to be, if we look at where the graph is, this set of things here. So we know the range of g... needs to be that g of x is greater than or equal to whatever this number is here. To calculate it, we put 1 into our function g. 2 minus 1 is 1. So this is our starting point. Now we know that g is going into f. So we've got to think about how the range of g is going to fit with the domain of f. Because remember, the domain is the set of numbers we are allowed to put in. Okay, so we're allowed to put in any number from 0 to 2 to f, because that's what we've said. But for g, we can only get out all numbers greater than or equal to 1. If we think about it on a number line, 0, 1, 2, and so on. The range of g is going to be whoops, here. The domain of f is everything here. So the set of numbers that we're allowed to put into f can be from 0 to 2. But the set of numbers we're going to get out from g is 1 and above. So for our composite function, fg of x, the set of numbers that we're going to be able to use are between 1 and 2. So if we think about the set of numbers between 1 and and 2. The numbers we're putting in to f come from g. So although the range of g is greater than or equal to 1, we need to restrict with this top limit because of what we're allowed to put into f. So we've got to find the numbers that we are going to get from g of x being between 1 and 2. We know g of x is 2 minus x, because that's what we've said. If we now go about solving this inequality, we're going to get minus 1 is less than minus x, less than or equal to 0, multiplying through by minus 1. That's wrong. 
multiplying through by minus 1, we're going to get that x is between 0 and 1. This is the domain of f g of x. Now we have the domain of f g of x, we can work out the function f g of x using our normal composite function method. So f g is putting the function g into f, which is going to give us 4 minus 2 minus x all squared. Now I'm not going to worry about multiplying this out. Now I'm not going to worry about multiplying this out. Uh, because we don't need to. If we now think about what this function is doing on this domain. Now because f g of x is still quadratic, it's continuous across the whole domain. So we can think about, we don't need to think about too much with this. Okay, so we know here we've got uh, the vertex is going to be 4, uh, sorry, minus 2, 4. And it's going to be this way up. Okay, it's going to go through the y-axis because when x is 0, we get 4 minus 4. So it's 0. And then we just need to think about x between 0 and 1. So we've got 0 and 1 there. When x is 1, we can calculate y. 4 minus 2 minus 1 all squared is 3. So the range is going to be that f g of x needs to be between 0 and 3. And that's how you find the domain and range of a composite function. I'm going to do the same example again, but going through a slightly more abstract method that means you don't actually need to work out the function itself. So this second method is if you're just wanting to find the range of f, g, and x, and the exam doesn't care what the domain is. It's a little bit more abstract but works in broadly the same way. We still need to think about the range of g of x. So we've got the domain of g and that's then going to give us the range of g. If we then combine that with the domain of f, we get a new domain of f. We then get a, from that domain, a range of f, which is going to be equal to the range of fg. So let's go through this and apply what we're doing. So the domain of g of x is s, it's less than or equal to 1. Like we did before, if we combine the range of g, sorry, that's the, that's, yeah, combine the range of g, which we said was g of x is greater than or equal to 1, and combine that with the domain of f. Oops which is going to be x is less than or equal to 2. Sorry, x is between 0 and 2. This is then going to give us a new domain for f in the same way that we thought about before. But now, instead of thinking about if we put g into here, we, get a, we can calculate a domain for fg. If we think about the range of f on this domain, 
we can see that when we put 1 into our f equation, we're going to get 3. And when we get when we put 2 into our f equation, we're going to get 4. Oh, sorry, 0. So our new range of f on this domain is that f is between 0 and 3. And as we saw previously, this is the same as the domain, sorry, the range of f, g of x. So this is a slightly weirder way to justify it, and it's useful if you don't care what the domain of f, g is, and also don't care what the function f, g is. This means you have to work less out. This is unlikely to be necessary in the exam, because typically these questions will require you to have previously found the composite function. So you can use the first method that we went through and probably don't need to worry about, frankly, this mess. Regardless though, there's two methods to finding the range of f g of x and the first example also went through how to find the domain of f g of x. Thank you for watching.